a point charge negative Q is located at the center of a conducting spherical shell, shown in this cross-sectional view. The net charge on the conducting shell is positive 3Q. What are the net charges, if any, on the inner and outer surfaces of the shell? First, I can draw electric field lines going into this negative charge. I'm going to use four lines for every 1Q. So I need the four lines to go into this negative 1Q. I have to start the lines over here on the inner surface because no electric field lines can exist inside this conducting shell because the electric field has to be zero inside a conductor in a static situation. This means those four lines I'm going to draw must originate from the inner surface of the shell. Therefore, the inner surface must carry a net positive charge for the lines to come out of. And the four lines come out of the inner surface. The four lines means 1Q, that makes the charge on the inner surface positive 1Q. So the answer must be D. For D, does it make sense for the outer surface to have a net charge of positive 2Q? Yes because the net charge on the conducting spherical shell has to be positive 3Q. And for a conductor in a static situation, net charges can only be found on the surface, the inner surface or the outer surface or both. So these two added together has to be positive 3Q. So D works. Let's finish drawing field lines for this entire charge distribution before moving on to the next multiple choice questions. We have a positive Q on the inner surface and a positive 2Q on the outer surface. That means we have to draw lines accordingly. For the positive Q, we already have four lines coming out of the positive Q. For this positive 2Q, we will need eight lines coming out of it. So we'll have to come out this way, eight lines. coming out for the positive, and 2Q corresponds to 8 lines, 2 times 4. Things should work out even if we combine charge distributions. For example, if I combine the inner and outer surfaces of the shell, there are 4 lines coming out of the inner surface and 8 lines coming out of the outer surface for a total of 12 lines coming out of the shell. This matches the positive 3Q for the entire spherical shell. Or we can put everything over here in a black box. And there would be eight lines coming out of this black box, which means that there must be positive 2Q inside this black box. So it's negative 1Q plus 1Q plus positive 2Q, which is indeed a positive 2Q. So everything works out no matter how you look at it. Three capacitors, C1 equals to 10 nanofarad, C2 equals to 10 nanofarad. C3 equals to 15 nanofarad. They are connected to a battery as shown in this circuit diagram. Which of the following is correct about C2 and C3? And which of the following is correct about C1 and C2? C2 and C3, they are in series, so they have the same charge. And uh, Q equals to CV, because uh, they have the same charge, that means that the one with a larger capacitance must get lower voltage. C2 has a smaller capacitance, so C2 must have a higher voltage. So V2 must be higher than V3. So Q has to be the same, and the V2 has to be higher than V3. So the answer is C. This time we're comparing C1 and C2. These two, they have the same capacitance. 
because these two segments they are in parallel with the battery, which means all three segments they have the same voltage. But C2 and C3 they are in series, so they have the same charge, but they have to share the voltages. That means they have to share the same amount of voltage C1 gets. So C2 gets less voltage than C1. And because Q equals to CV, they have the same capacitance. The one with the lower voltage must get less charge. So V2 is less than V1. V2 is less than V1. And the Q2 has to be less than Q1. So the answer is C.